Okay, that's fine. All right. So thanks, Paula. Thanks for agreeing to come on uh, live, you know, video and just share okay. some feedback about how you feel your coaching style is going. Because as I was explaining, when uh, coach trainees such as yourself get halfway through the course and it comes to the practical life coaching skills where you're actually face to face with a client with a real life issue yeah this is when we can be a, a rabbit in the headlights mm. because we're up in our brain thinking you need to have all the magic pill answers yeah and when that brain and fear kick in it shuts you it shuts your critical thinking down it shuts mm. your rationale yeah and really, we want to be up in the head, as in we, we kind of want to be thinking a little bit, but we really want to drop into the body and into the heart, making that connection with the client. There is a skill in coaching, which is what we were just discussing, about how to ask a question. Yeah. So just in your own words, I know we're going to backtrack, um, just in your own words, just tell me why you wanted to, to speak to me today and have this mentor session with me. Yeah, I, I just, a couple of coaching sessions this week, I've felt a bit lost and I've not really been sure of what to say or how to say it or whether it was appropriate for me to say it because I have kind of picked up on things with a client, a couple of clients and I didn't know whether they needed ca counselling or not or whether it was appropriate for me to say different things. And that is a great, that's a great, um, that's a great question is when do we refer to counsellors or GPs or psychotherapists? So just give me an example of where you felt that might be appropriate for someone. Well, it was um, one of the clients at the beginning, I was thinking about setting the goal and the goal that she wanted to work on was to feel more confident. I mean, I don't know whether that was specific enough anyway to start off with on reflection, but I asked her what her confidence was out of 10 at the moment. And she said she felt like it was about six out of 10. And then I tried to hone into a, uh, a situation where she didn't feel confident and she'd been invited to something and she wasn't sure whether to go or not. Um, and then we were talking about, I started to do set on the situation and when we got to like the emotional part and the, the mental part, there just seemed to be so much going on. I mean, she had already said in her forms that she, she does live in her head a lot, but she just, it was much more, it just seemed to be quite deep. Yeah. And I didn't really know um, what to say. She was saying that um, she didn't know whether she could make friends with these people. And I know that she'd had therapy before and I asked her if they'd ever talked to her about being her own friends, you know, making, making friends with herself, but I just didn't know whether that was the appropriate thing for me to say or not. Okay, so there's a couple of things in there that I can help you with. So obviously a client's back history, have they had counselling before, have they had therapy before, are they still in it? How recent was it and what was it for? Is there anything you need to be made aware of? It's their responsibility to tell you if they know they have underlying health issues. And that's not to say you can't work with a client. You very much can. It's just very much about where they are right now. Right, okay. And if somebody is with a counsellor or a mental health team and they still want to work with you, then you just ask for a GP referral letter. So if somebody's still under the care of a mental health team, you, mm. you must insist on a GP letter to say that it's okay, okay. to work with you as a coach. Yeah. Um, if, that, if, if you feel that that's where they're at and they don't get the GP letter, then it's not a great idea to work with somebody who is under a mental health team because you might contradict yeah. what's going on for them mm. um, coaching can go deep because you're learning to become a spiritual soul awakening coach and a yeah. soul awakening coach just does just that it awakens the soul of the other to live its full potential yeah and as you get further into the course with the seven steps to spiritual alchemy coaching program you can take a client clip through and she might be ideal for this yeah it looks at every stage of their psychological and spiritual development through the chakras. So mm -hmm. she'll see what's happened on her timeline. Yeah. Early years, 
7 to 14, 14 to 21, and she'll see the incidences that have happened to create this still locked in trauma about being judged, criticised, whatever her language is, yeah. around making friends and the insecurities yeah. around it. Yeah. So don't be afraid to go deep. Mm. For me, that's what it's all about. It's all about okay. going deep. It's not about, though, um, working as a counsellor or a psychotherapist because we don't have those skills. Yeah. We want to go deep because we want somebody to, to, to let go of that energy that's keeping them stuck. And that's normally an emotional incident that they haven't quite worked through because one part of their brain that's designed to keep them stays is still living the story that this can happen to them again okay. so once they become aware that that's just a story mm. and it's not actually true yeah then they can start to rewire their brain through telling themselves a different story as in i mean just tell everybody what you said about becoming your own best friend i think that's perfect yeah yeah they just I said to her about becoming her own best friend for her to do things for herself and that's when I asked about if she'd be open to doing some meditation every day because she did live in her head so much and also we made a list of all the things that she felt she was good at and I suggested that she wrote them down and said them to in the morning every day and one of them was art and she showed me a piece of her artwork that she hadn't quite finished so I asked if she could finish it by the following week if she could do a face on it and she said that she'd try to yeah. so just things like that really yeah and they're they're beautiful things to do because she's going within the, the skills that you're you know giving her the resources that you're giving her is to go within is to connect with herself it's not yeah. to find uh, gratitude and appreciation reflected back to her in the eyes of other people because we're not in control of that but you're giving her autonomy on her own emotional state and that's what it's about you know you're getting yeah. to the core of it absolutely yeah okay that's great because I just didn't know whether that was my role or not I think I was probably holding back too much because I just didn't know how far to go yeah I mean like I say the only way you know or anything I would say don't do is to go oh I can tell exactly what's going on with you da, 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 da. this is what and it's obvious to me and this is what you need to do you know obviously we never say that no. we are not the oracle we are no. responding to their response mm. we need to get inside their brain and yeah. normally you, the client is telling themselves a story and we know that that story stems back from past. an experience an experience that they've hung on to to stop that pain happening again yeah um and that could, you yeah. know so would you say so just try and um if you feel as if there's a lot of things happening just to try and slowly build on one after the other yes start with what the solution looks like first remember this is like solution focus People need to work towards a goal. Yeah. And that goal, at the minute, her goal is to be liked by people, possibly. Yeah. Generalising, because I don't know the full ins and outs. But her goal could be liked by people. She needs to be liked by people. But her subconscious is telling her, you're not liked by people because you were told that you're not likeable. Therefore, yeah. you need to isolate yourself. Mm. And, and so she's in conflict with herself yeah so her goal needs to be what does life look like for you when you're in the best emotional state for you yeah and get her to tell you well what that looks like is I will be and I will feel and I will be doing yeah so that's what you have to work towards then mm. Do you think that's a healthy goal for someone to have to say that they want people to like them? Mm, no, not really. Not no. Yes and no. We all want people to like us, don't we? Yeah. Um, but a healthy goal is whatever it is that she wants for her life. Okay. So that's you know part of the goal is she wants to be 
with a group yeah. of people and have yeah. a community rather than isolating herself. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's the all right goal for her to have because yeah. it's actually kind, kind of measurable. Yeah, yeah, because she did talk. She'll know no she's achieved it because she'll have a set of friends compared to, let's just say, no set of friends and complete isolation. Yeah. She'll know she's achieved that goal. Now, the goal can be reframed from being Achieve. liked yeah. by people to being part of a group. Yeah. And being myself in that group. Yeah. You know? Yeah, so you can the same reframe yeah. the goal like mm -hmm. that. Because yeah. you have to make them aware that they're only in control of themselves and yeah. not the people. Yeah, yeah, that's why I thought about saying to be your own friend first. First of all, to yeah. say, yeah. and if she could get that bit of like in herself, because one of her other things was that she didn't really like herself. Exactly. That she could begin to feel not as nervous going into the situation with other people. That's exactly it, Paula. Like you've hit the nail on the head. First and foremost, how do you feel about yourself? Yeah. You know, because how we feel about ourselves, we transfer mm. into the eyes of other people. We make yeah. up stories based on this false belief that we're hanging on to. So you've done the right thing. You've got to the core of it already very quickly yeah. that we need to work on you liking you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that does feel better. I just sometimes feel as if I'm like, oh God. <laughs> That's what coaching is. I feel so overwhelmed by it all at the time. Yeah, good. <laughs> good, because I know you I know you're getting in there and you're giving it a go. If you didn't yeah. then if you didn't feel like that, then there's something wrong. Yeah. It's best yeah. that you feel like this now in this training environment with me and all your other students to support you and practice with than going yeah. out in the big bad world not having the right skills, being with a client who ha needs that support and not knowing how the hell to handle it. Yeah, yeah, I do feel better about it because I realise that that is that can be my role and that's what I wanted my role to be anyway. I want to help people because I was like that as well. Yeah. I could just totally identify with everything that she said. I used to be exactly the same. Yeah. Um, and I know how painful it is. That's another point as well that you bring up is um, identification with the client's problem. So this is something yeah. to be aware of when you're coaching. When you know that something's worked for you, it might not necessarily work for them. So you've always got to be quite saying to me, saying to yourself, okay, the, you know, other brain that's aware that you're coaching and talking going, okay, uh, how involved am I in this story? Do I have enough separation between this story and my own story to coach her? Yeah. Make sure you get out of the way. Your story stays over there. Okay, I see. And you don't coach her through your story, you coach her through right. her story. Okay. Yeah. And you'll always good. remember the outcome of the, the session. And even every session, you can maybe talk about it, is the goal that she wants yeah spend as much time going over that goal as you need and like you say is that a healthy goal that's where you need to coach around healthy goals yeah and what she's in control of and what she's not in control of i see yeah that makes sense so do you think it's okay to have a goal of a button to build your self-confidence for one session or it, that you'd have to build on that really wouldn't you that's why i tried to hone it into one thing it's a long-term picture goal but you need to yeah. know what you're working towards to support yeah. towards it and like you rightly said what does confidence look like for her does yeah. it look like walking into a room and singing you know what what does she really mean when she says be more confident it's so yeah. different for Broad. everybody and you yeah. can go and ask that question on your next session. Yeah, I will do, yeah. You're clear enough because she might be being more confident as a result of your session, but if you guys haven't discussed how that actually looks, she, yeah. she, she won't know that she's no. being more confident. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Any other questions? Um, I talked to her a bit about the part stuff. I don't know whether I should have done that or not, though. 
-hmm. And then I showed her the picture from the book, you know, the um the the living room with the people underneath in the subconscious mind. She did seem to understand it though, and the self in the middle. I said, when you're getting building your confidence, you're learning to find out who what your true essence is and who you are. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you do a four pillar reading? No, I didn't do the four pillar. I just did this. Well, I tried to do Seth, but like I say, we didn't really get to the end of it. Okay. So with Seth, there's another good point. With Seth, this is about the transformation and the turnaround. So the bigger picture needs to be about embodying the energy, the archetype, whatever you want to call it, around when they have li when they're living life to their full potential. Yeah. We want to make them aware of the story that's playing out now so they see it and see how it's affecting them physically, emotionally, spiritually. But then yeah. we really want to make sure that we spend the most time on, well, you know, what does life look like for you when you okay. and be there and really be there? Tell me what you're doing. Yeah. Tell me like how you feel. Why do you feel that way? Mm. What's so good about life right now? Yeah. Give it the name. You know, and bring that energy back into the here and now. What piece of advice does your future self have for you, you now self, to totally align into that positive future that you're moving okay, into? That, that's really good because that's what I'm not really doing. I don't think as much. Don't, don't worry. It, it's just, it, and you probably need to make this more clear with set. The way that people transform is they need to have a motivating reason to change yeah you're there to help them feel into that best life because that's the pull that will get them there because they're trapped at the minute mm. and then they can see they're trapped in the story and they can see what the story is doing to them and then when they see this best life where they live their full potential that will light them up that feeling yeah. will keep, give them the strength they need to keep going and make sure that they mm. get to where they want to be yeah, because she did even say when I asked about doing the meditation every day, I don't know what it would be like to feel good. Mm. I, 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 sort of like she was used to not feeling good about herself. And so that would have been quite good to do probably. And I'll do that next time. Do it next time. And don't even, don't bother with the first archetype of set. Just go straight into the solution, the transformation and the turnaround. Yeah, yeah. And you can do that every session or as, as it feels natural. Like, come on, yeah. you're going to embody this energy again. Get yourself yeah. into the state of, for instance, Susan. <laughs> Don't like it. Yeah. Get yourself into the state of Susan when Susan is being her best self. Just close your mm -hmm. eyes, hand on your heart, and just feel those feelings. Tell me what you see. Yeah. And just just so every time she's with you, She's building on the, that energetic state of being yeah. empowered. Yeah, it definitely works. Cause it's one of the things that helped me work, get better, visualising myself well. It's the thing. All that stuff it's really happens. Thing. That's what athletes do, top performers. They don't just think about how they're going to do it. They see it, they feel it, they yeah. feel like they've done it and won. Mm. The brain doesn't know the difference between real or fake. You know, yeah. so many studies done about people going to the gym versus people imagining going to the gym and the people imagine going to the gym have built their muscle mass up by oh x amount percent just by sitting yeah. on the sofa and imagining yeah. they're at the gym the visualization works because your body doesn't know the difference between real or fake because emotionally yeah. it starts off by a thought a visual image and a feeling and your body responds to that feeling and when yeah. you give when you connect your brain and your body in an empowered way, you you create a reality from that place. Because at the minute she's creating it from this negative place. Yeah. And that's the story. Yeah. You want her to create it from this empowered state, empowered story. So get her in that empowered state now and yeah. coach her from that place. Don't yeah. coach her from the place of misery, maybe. Yeah. Try yeah. Be coaching her from the place of empowerment. Well, what would you do in, you know, how would Susan do it? How would yeah. Susan enter a room? Yeah. Feeling super confident. Mm. 
just for Susan as their architect. Yeah. 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 I can do that on myself as well before coaching. Definitely. Because I do get like the rabbit in the headlight before and I think it's because I'm not in control. There's no control to it because it can't be planned out. So it's, I start getting worked up, like you said earlier on, you know, beforehand. I start thinking, oh my God, what if this, I don't know what to do or I don't know what to say. So I'm already in a little state of anxiety, probably sometimes. Of course. And again, completely natural, but it is about your emotional state. It's a bit yeah. like, you know, I've got a, a four year old daughter. You know, I can get her excited or disappointed with the words that I say and the emotional yeah. state that she gets into with it. You know, if she's got to go and do something rubbish at school that she doesn't want to go, if I make it exciting with my language, it changes her yeah. emotional state. So she goes in with that energy. If I, yeah, yeah it's really rubbish, isn't it? You, oh, I can't believe it's going to be rubbish for you. Well, uh, she in yeah. And she creates through that energy. So it's all about energetic states. Yeah, yeah, that's really good. Thank you. No worries. Anything else? Um, no, I don't think so. I think I've just, I'm going to definitely do that beforehand for myself mm. and not have that panic and then think more about getting them into the state that they want to be. That's, that's a really good idea. And trust myself as well of the things I want to say. Yeah. Even spend as much time on that emotional state that they want to be in, the solution solution focused outcome that they want yeah because they'll yeah. align themselves to it then um mm. do you use archetype cards i i use these archetype cards which are quite good caroline like, no Nicks. no i haven't got those ones quite good i mean <clears throat> so what i do with these archetype ones is i just shuffle and i intuitively ask to see what archetypes playing out for the client so the one I just pulled for you is warrior I don't know. so the archetype I... got a light and a shadow so it's whichever yeah. is playing out so the light attributes is strength skill discipline and toughness of will heroism stoicism and self-sacrifice in conquering the ego Okay, great. Which I would say is pretty apt for what, you know, the reason why you're here, basically. Yeah. Um, shadow attributes, traits and ethical principles for victory at any cost, indifference to the suffering inflicted on others. So, you know, I'd say obviously the light one is playing out with you. So, and for me, you know, I would say that, you know, you're really always willing to keep going to get over yeah, your yeah yeah to not to not sit there like coaches can do because i know how tough it is and go i'm crap at this who do i think i am taking a coaching course i'm never going to be yeah. able to anyone look at me my life shit or whatever you know we mm. say to ourselves to beat ourselves yeah. up. you always come back to me and go can you help me with this can you look at that for me can you give me feedback yeah. you know that is a warrior yeah, and I did a card for myself this morning from the soul coaching ones, and it was uh, it was courage, and it said in that I'm a warrior. Oh my God, wow, that's so cool! So yeah. take that message, Paula, mm. and you know, and take it with you. You you are just being really amazing as a coach because you want to reflect on your skills. Yeah. That's you getting out of your ego and going, okay, let's have a look. What could I have done differently? What was I really good at? What can I improve on? Who can I reach out to for support? You know, that's yeah, you, not you and your ego. That's you elevating yourself and raising your consciousness to go, you know what? It's, it's not about you particularly. You're learning a skill and this is what you need to do to develop that skill and master it. Yeah, you don't yes. hide away. Hide away from getting any feedback from me. Hide away from being with a client. <laughs> You know, yeah. get the course, whatever, give up. That's not yeah. what we're about. No, thanks. Thank you. Well, well done. And here for you anytime. So keep going. Keep Thank up you. the good work. Thanks. Can you give me the name of those cards, Anne-Marie? I'd love to get those. Yeah, it's Caroline Mace, M-Y-S-S. -S. Archetype, archetype cards, I think they're called.
Thanks. All right, then. Thank you, Thanks very much. It really helped. Bye. Thanks. Bye.